I've got a chair for you. Oh, thanks. <laughs> we were all just I taking a, a head to toe. So, you know, it's not here. It's over there. So. Okay. to uh, accept the minutes from October 6th. I move to okay. accept the minutes from October 6th. I'll second. And a second, second from presented. Michelle. Uh, any discussion, edits of the minutes, comments? All in favor of accepting the minutes as written then, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain? The minutes are accepted. Thank you. Um, as we talked about last time, this is this is a typical quarterly review, but because of um, my own mistakes on um, inviting people to the meeting, we didn't have uh, representatives from the police and fire. So we have them here today to present their budgets first, um, and then we'll go through the quarterly review 
uh, as, as was planned. So the first uh, order is, is for the, the police department. Sure. I snuck up. What's that? I snuck up here. You did. <laughs> and uh, uh, John, how do you pronounce your last name? Uraskovich. Uraskovich. Great. Uh, and so uh, I think people have seen the presented budget, at least for the, the select board's presented budget. Mm -hmm. I don't recall if there was okay. any, this is the same, that's right. Mm -hmm. So um, if people have questions that they'd like to ask, is it Chief or Lieutenant? Chief. Chief, thank you. Uh, Chief, you're asking which, you're asking which, now's your chance. Does anybody have questions on the police budget? I have. Uh, John, in the in the SIP, we talked about the body cameras being part of the police operating budget. Correct. Did, did I miss that in here? So oh. the the, the twenty five thousand we left in the CIP for the purchase of the cameras. Okay. And then I added a line that is under let's see, it was for seven thousand. Um, IT storage, correct. So it's in there. Okay. Yes, that's where that comes from. And while we're on the topic of that, you see under equipment it went from sixteen to twenty thousand. That was where we took the laptops and the MTDs out of the CIP and added that four thousand a year to just purchase them yearly. If you remember that. But for next year, it was built in from the 68000 that I took out of that lieutenant's line. So it was appropriated out of that. It's not an add-on. It still comes in under the budget. So, John, where is it on this, on this budget that we're looking at now? It, will, it is on this is um, this year's budget. This is a quarterly. It was last time that was actually presented. It was, um, so I thought this was his budget he's presenting. Oh. I did too, and oh. I made a copy of the wrong one. I should have copied this one. And it's right down here in IT storage. It's a new line for 7000 So, please, it was in the one that was presented the, where it just had police and fire. Mm -hmm. What? It, yeah, last meeting. I don't know if everybody has a copy of that. I can make a copy of that if you'd like. I'll make a copy of this one real quick. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That's the one. So is this the yeah, it, it, it does get confusing. <laughs> Karen, Karen, could you say the line number again? It was. Yep. Um, so do you have the last copy? The last copy on the show. I have the current copy. It's the, the, that's this year's budget. Oh. The one that we have last yep. is last um, the proposed budget. Yeah. Um, so you won't see it because this okay. is this year's budget. Thank you. But when you do see it, it's line one fifteen. Okay. Um, I print some copies. That's, no, that's what I'm um, sure. Yeah.
So these will show all the changes. And the IT line is built in. It's the last line before the total. And actually those three last lines are the three new lines. Prosecution, admin assistant, and IT storage. Um, so is that for the body cameras as well as the storage? No, that's for the storage. So where's the body cam? Count? They're in the CIP. There's a 25,000 warrant article for those. Okay, thank you. And will every, every officer get one? Every officer will wear one. We may have to share here and there, okay. but each officer will be assigned one when they come on. Okay. to ask about the prosecution line sure. so the understanding is that somebody being hired to correct go to court and do all the stuff that prevents you from being here yes exactly so she handles all of our arraignments all of our trials um, she sends out all the discovery basically everything I had to do which was being a mini lawyer okay. she handles all that now okay and does she go to court as well she does she handles all of that how many hours is that? I mean, is that enough? It is. So she has three small towns, actually, us, Barrington, and Stratford. So every day, every Wednesday, she comes in for at least half a day to meet with the officers that may have a case scheduled or something like that. She goes over all the cases that are pending. She makes sure all the paperwork gets in. Um, I'll still deliver the paperwork for her in the court just because it's easier. But she does it all up and then just leaves me a pile. I just take 10 minutes out of my day to go drop it off, and it's great. Okay. Okay. Talk a little bit about the funding around. Oh, you did? Okay. About what? ARPA. ARPA funds. Um, ARPA. ARPA funds. 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 Sure What's the acronym? Oh, yeah. the American Recovery Plan. Uh, yeah, that wasn't going to cover this, though. You mean the COVID relief funds? Yeah. yeah. But we, we found a page in there that says it does cover staffing. Oh, so, really? Yeah, I think it was page 19. Okay. And, uh, That's just, news to me. Uh, I apologize. I can bring it up. But, um, so there was money in there for staffing, um, and that was, I think, the original plan for well, the original plan behind it was the fact that I didn't have the time to do it when I took over as chief. And unfortunately, we don't have anyone else that was trained due to COVID. And uh, it, it takes too much time in the department this small. It really does. So even if I had Sergeant Hancock go, we would just tie him up just like it did me. So it's actually much more sense to hire someone. Well, yeah, it also is hard. It isn't really the chief's job Correct. to prosecute because Chief Duchamp didn't do it either. Right. That's why you were doing it. Right. And I did it's it not, for 15 you, years. <laughs> yeah. So it was because it really isn't, you've got to have that person. Right. Have In between. Way. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. so. My recollection from our discussion last week was that um, the number of officers that you guys are staffing is, is lower now, possibly because you're freeing up time with this position. Is that, does that help you guys? It definitely helps free me up. Yeah. So the rest of the guys, um, they unless I need them in court, they really didn't play a part in prosecution. But it definitely took a good uh, 10 to 15 hours off my plate a week mm -hmm. from making calls to lawyers and sitting on the court while everything was done through phone or sitting in court for hours at a time just waiting. And So I, now you're able to rotate into patrol. Exactly. Like and do the other stuff that I need to do. Yeah. I wanted to ask you, uh, how are we looking on, on vehicles? We're usually leasing vehicles. Uh, are we just on maintenance now? Have we caught up? So we have caught up, only because we were uh, two years behind due to COVID. <laughs> um, each vehicle that we purchased in the last three years came for a full year late. So this year, I took it out of the CIP and put it back in for 2023. So, because we now have two newer vehicles, and uh, maintenance took a big hit this year because we had the older vehicles, but now that we have the two newer ones, hopefully that slows down. So we have one with about 15,000 miles, and the other has about 30. So that's why I took uh, it out of CIP for this year to try and save the town some money. Okay, thank you. 
are we still doing leasing? So currently we are. I hope to go away from that in 2023 and go back to just buying them out. And the way I did the CIP plan was to just buy them out, right? Um, this budget in total is 620000 but the one that was presented to us last week was six twenty two. So I don't know what the changes were, but it looks like to be some big discrepancies in, like, retirement. Uh, the, re the retirement line and the payroll tax line, those are things that are going to change, and Chuck's going to get those numbers figured out before the final budget goes in. Um, those are something that comes from the state, and they change year to year. The budget presented last week for retirement, for example, was 95000 and this one has it still 108, so I didn't know what was being shuffled around. Um, so, so I left it alone, anticipating my two full-time officers coming on. And the 95 could have been this year where we were down to two full-timers. So I would leave it at the 108. I think it's safer to leave it there and come in under. Oh, I, I did find it, but I forwarded it to you. But if you want, I can quickly, if anybody's interested, I can quickly read part of this. <clears throat> On page 19, it says, in all communities, recipients may use resources to rehire police officers and other public servants to restore law enforcement and courts to their pre-pandemic levels. Additionally, funds can be used for expenses to address COVID-related court backlogs, including hiring above pre-pandemic levels as a response to the public health emergency. And then it goes on to talk about um, communities um, where there's increased violence or increased difficulty in accessing or providing services to respond to or mitigate the effects of violence. And um, as a result of pandemic, they may use funds to address that harm. Um, spending may include hiring law officials, um, community violence intervention, investing in technology. Um, so it, it has to be interpreted, but there's a possibility that there's some funding around there as well. And I forward you the email that Caroline and I had about that. Okay. So is, is the, so the so reference to this because we may be able to reduce this see bottom line I have budget left based left on that, left or is that, how is that going to factor into the budget? Well, I, I so think what we originally talked yeah. about it. Um, <clears throat> It was possible that we were going to be able to use our, our plus right. lines for the new positions um, in the future. You see my little side note and that's back. kind of the extent of the discussion. We've already applied. Yeah, we have a couple of years. Well, we have a couple of years. 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 We have a couple of
that line really is, is kind of a funky line. I know you, the town has to appropriate the money, but really you can run that line into the red all you want because at the end of the day, the town's already made about $42,000 from contracted services. Just shows up on the revenue side? Correct. Um, that's 55. I have this 50. Uh, and this sheet shows 50. Yeah, the, but the budget that I, I gave that, to everybody last time has 55. It has 55. Okay. So we might but again, at the end of the day, that's a line that you could really run into the red as much as you want, and you're still going to come out much better on the flip side. Can you talk about um, the revenue this year? Sure. Um, so we have been fortunate, to, the guys have been fortunate to get a chance to make a lot of extra money in uh, towns such as Milton, Barrington, Lee, Stratford. Uh, Lewis Tree, Eversource, they've been working a lot up in those areas and they're small towns like us so we all use each other to help out and uh, right now on the revenue sheet it's about $42,000 that the town has profited from those details plus the officers have made some extra money as well. So, so, when, so, you, oh, so oh, when you see that Rawls for Cruiser in Milton and there's a guy out there flagging, <laughs> just think about the flip side of it. <laughs> Um, so there, the detail he's talking about is in one of the uh, revenue sheets that I gave you all. Yeah. It's probably the biggest uh, revenue source out of the municipality for the town uh, as far as making extra money. Well, we haven't been able to take advantage of that because we were short of staff in the past. Correct. Right. So, and we don't see many details here in Rollinsburg, so we only get these opportunities really when those smaller towns get the influx of. Um, Lewis Tree will send three crews in, and they'll all be on different streets, so, you know, small towns like us can't handle that. So, same thing with Milton, Barrington, so they outsource to us, and we all help each other. Any other questions? So Lynn's an accountant, you might have noticed. I see. <laughs> Check your numbers. Any other questions for the chief? I tried to hold the bottom line and be by reallocating that lieutenant line came in about almost twelve hundred dollars under of the two thousand twenty one budget. So so my understanding from last week is we are your level funding, it's things that switched around here or yes. there in the, in the line item at the end of the day. Right, so what I did was I took that $68,000, that was my old lieutenant line, and I reallocated to bring in those new lines that we needed to make sure that instead of going up 5 6%, we held the bottom line. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate the thank you. presentation, and thanks for coming tonight. You're welcome. Any questions? And I think it's your call. It's your guys' <laughs> turn. <laughs>
we had uh, some discussion. Basically, a lot of the areas we're going to change is it's, we'd like to see change from the salaries, both for my position and the members. Um, our fuel line was, was uh, reduced last year, and that needs to return. It's kind of common sense with the way fuel is nowadays. We're kind of falling behind on that. Um, we added our new air filling station, and it's going to be, we need to have an increase in uh, the testing line for equipment because that's required by uh, law to uh, have, have the equipment tested every quarter. But when we had our first meeting with the uh, select board, our, our initial thing is uh, mutual aid, the mutual aid line on here, community mutual aid, which is what, one. 58 in that area, that's going to go away. The thousand dollars on that that we've been paying for a number of years is gone because that program has been disbanded. Hold so, um, on for a second because we're looking at the sheet that was, I'm looking at the sheet that's distributed last week. The numbers aren't added, the line numbers aren't adding up the same, aren't the same numbers as your. Oh, employer. okay. So, do we have. Um, Oh, she just went to print something. Oh, she just went to print something. Right. I think. Which will be 167. Yeah. We'll just start with that one. That one, like I said, is going to go away. Because that was a program that was set up in the 10 local communities. And a lot of it changed the function of some of those getting a new fire station. So they got rid of the air van, which was one of the pieces of equipment we used to fill our air bottles at a, at a scene. So that has gone away. That's not available to us anymore. And that is one of the reasons why, in last year's budget, through the Warren articles, we got the air filling station because we had no other way to fill our bottles. So if we had an incident, we used to go there. But now we have no place to go. I could use Elliot, I could use South Burke, but their system is so small. And they're like us, they're a call fire department. I have to put them out to take care of our needs, which is just not the way that we can do business. So that all worked out. So that $1,000 is going to be gone. Um, what we did in the uh, radio equipment line, $15,000 line, in our initial discussions with the select board, it was like, well, if you want this, you got to give us something else. So we had a discussion on that, and we want to reduce that line by $5,000. Uh, the reason why is we want to shift some of these funds around to go to some of the other lines, which we know we need to see an increase in. Um, that line item was put in three years ago due to the radio upgrades that were happening in Dover. Um, and it was on a yearly basis to get us to where we needed to be, and it was $60,000. Am I going too fast? It's 154, guys. No, we just took them at a line. Okay. Yeah. She hasn't got the 154. Got it. Thanks. So. We were using that that line is to catch up with the radio equipment upgrades that we needed to do as a department. Um, last year, that whole line was not utilized by the fire department per se for radio equipment. Um, I don't know if we had this discussion before. We had a major failure with the tank truck last year, whereas the pump on the truck failed. And the town obviously needs to have the tank truck. So in order for us to take care of that, um, we had to find the money within the fire department budget. There wasn't any funds any place else that the town was going to allow us to use to make that, that repair. It ended up being $30,000 that we had to find. That came out of the budget last year. So that put us a step behind in a lot of areas that now we're trying to catch up with again. Um, that was the first one that we had to uh, attack. But the $30,000, uh, 15 of it came right there. And then we found that some of our other line items that we just didn't spend the money. We had to take it away from someplace else. So it's put us behind in our radio equipment, which we needed to keep up with, our gear purchases for the firefighters, which we needed to keep up with. So all these things are taking a step back because of that one issue. Um, so that's where we were with that one. Are you hooked up, Sean? I am, but I don't, unless you shut the lights off because of the projector there, you're not going to see it. If I shut the lights off, you guys aren't going to be able to see your spreadsheet. So. <laughs> well, well all, what I'll do is I hit the two sections that we were going to reduce funding in. So why don't we just, we'll take a minute, we'll flip over and go over this, and then we can have a discussion and we can discuss the other line items that we're going to deal with. Just a quick question, Mark, on the, on the radio. So when you said you reduced the radio by $5,000, so it's $10,000 now with the team. Um, but we did, we did not buy the radios we expected to last year, so are, do we have enough radios? No. 
I'm just getting pushed further behind. Yeah. I lost a whole year because of that issue. And by taking out another five, pushes it out again. So we were looking at a four-year thing. It's going to be six or seven years before we're done with the radios that we need to have for upgrades. It just keeps kind of sliding backwards. We're trying to push it back into the I mean, the, the, the truck failing was just, there's nothing we can do about that. I mean, it's 17 years old. Um, it had a lot of issues, and, and it failed. So we had to get it fixed. And it's, it's, there's no gray area that you have to do. <coughs> so we found, the, we found the way to get it done. And we're still catching up with the repercussions on that. So it's back where it was. It's already been decided. Yes. Why we, uh, <laughs> I mean, the chief can justify what he asked for, but right. why are we looking at it again? <laughs> I'm a little confused there, that's all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So we're good to go, so Sean can do his, his little presentation for us. Sure. Mm -hmm. Really weak projection. Guesses is it's it's like another word on it goes in here. We actually used it at our last workshop. It took a little bit to get it going, but I don't want to hold you guys up, so I can just walk through it and uh, not present it. In the interest of time, um, so the big change is the increases, right? So, chief salary increase, current line item is at fifteen thousand. We're looking to increase that to eighteen thousand. With the police chief retiring, the emergency management director position got to move to the chiefs responsibilities list for the fire chief, which is common for most towns. Uh, usually emergency medical director falls under the fire department. Um, by New Hampshire statute, we have to have one as a town. And when an emergency happens, normally the fire department is the one that has the overall responsibility for that. That's the emergency management director. Does everybody understand that position? What it does? Yeah, we talked about that last week. All right, so everybody's good, so I don't need to go explain that. Okay. Um, the other thing that, that's added, we signed a contract with York Ambulance um, in the June, July timeframe, and part of that, they made the chief a liaison to York Ambulance. So if there's issues with staffing, with licensure, all of that is included under the chief's responsibilities now. Um, and then the, the final reason for it is just the increase in call volume. We're at 190 calls already this year. We're 
three quarters of the way through the year, and we did 180 sections last year. year. But we're already ahead of last year's call volume. Um, and that's a trend if you read some of the articles that we sent out um, prior to the meeting. It's a trend that all the departments are seeing. There's increased call volume. Uh, New Hampshire has an aging community. There's more people sick. And, and it, it, when people don't know who to call, it's usually the fire department that gets called. So if it's water in the basement, if it's you know, car accidents, fires, everything, the, the fire department gets called. So you know, we are seeing that. Um, mm -hmm. Did everybody get an email with, with a couple of different news articles in there? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you've read them, but uh, I'd encourage you to do that because it's a, it's a major problem that we're starting to face here with our um, staffing. Our staffing is, is, been on, is on a downward trend, getting to the point where it's being very concerning. Um, the two positions that we just talked about that got added to my slot is, is taking a lot more of my time, depending on the EMD stuff with the hurricanes that came through earlier in the year. It was taking me four or five hours a day until it was, the weather had changed. So these are things that I was never compensated for, and I fear in fairness, taking one position and making it three, uh, that's why we bumped it up, or I, thought, I feel that it should be bumped up to cover those two added responsibilities. Um, and the other one was fire department. Anybody hasn't seen a raise in a couple of years where everybody else in the community has. And every time I come to a meeting, whether it be select board or anything else, there's always been a big battle for everybody else getting a raise, whether it be PD, transfer station personnel, or well, the fire department hasn't seen it. So we're apparently just getting left behind. We're your first responders. We're the ones that get called first. We're the ones that have had the need to work through COVID and still are. And we haven't received anything. And I just, just see the way that's totally unfair. Um, our staffing is to the point where we have five members that live in our community that protect our community. The other 19 are from other communities. Everybody does understand that we're called fire department. Right? Everybody gets that. So that whatever we're doing, just think you're sleeping in the middle of the night, it's 10 below, you're watching a ball game, you're having dinner, you're with your grandkids. Well, the alarm goes off, and you're being asked to respond. So basically, stop your life, and you can go help somebody. But because we have such a large, dedicated amount of people that have staff in our fire department, um, we're still able to maintain what we need to do. But there's starting to be some cracks in the armor. Um, we're usually pretty well taken care of on weekends and evenings. Daytime is becoming particularly bad. Sean is around an awful lot. He, he can slide away from his job. My daytime job, I can slide away, along with another member that works with me doing that. So a lot of times, that's all we have in daytime. But no matter, we don't know who we are. When a call comes in, and everybody understands that call, what's the biggest thing in the fire department when it comes to service? It's time. Most uh, NFPA standards, you should have a fire truck or whatever piece of equipment you need on the road in three to five minutes. We can do okay with meeting that and all those other times, but not in the daytime. And it just expands. You know, if I'm going to a cardiac arrest, everybody understands the golden hour. Somebody doesn't have treatment in that three to five minutes, you have chances of getting less and less and less. So that's the one reason why I want to see the members get some compensation, compensation increase because of all these added responsibilities. And in truth, most of it's fallen on myself, Sean, and some of the other officers, because we're local, we're here. We can get there and do that. So uh, the other members, they're a very dedicated bunch. Uh, we're lucky to have them in a lot of ways. Uh, the other thing is we're in large competition with all the communities around us now. I don't know if you probably read the articles, see it in the paper, hear it, or whatever. Every fire department in the area is understaffed and cannot find personnel. Last year in our fire department, we had three of our people get hired permanently in local surrounding fire departments. And I anticipate a couple of more this year. Every time that happens, we step down on what we're able to deliver as far as the service goes. Um, I used to have a very good tie, and I still do, with a lot of local chiefs and UNH, where I was off feeder program. I was getting a lot of kids that were going to school, would come to the fire department. We could get them certified, and then they would be with us for a couple of years and tend to fly the coup. We're that way. That's our fire department. We're transient. I have a, a uh, list in my desk, and I've been in, in the fire department going on 34 years now here. Uh, 
I've been the chief for nine. I was the assistant chief for 15 before that. I keep that list, and since I've been there, then it just crossed over 90, 90 personnel that have been in the Rawlinson Fire Department. They're now career someplace else. I mean, it's a feather in our cap for what we're able to do, but it's also a double-edged sword. We have all these highly trained people, and all of a sudden it's like, thank you. They try to come back and help, but it's very tough for them to be able to do that. So that's kind of like my presentation as far as the salary ends to go. Um, our workload has increased tremendously, and i got to be able to tell the guys that there's some belief in the community and what you do, and it's going to come back a little bit of compensation. And the same for me. My workload has increased quite a bit. And I figured that that amount of money and the increases we're asking for are very minimal. In my book, very minimal. But I feel that the guys definitely deserve that stuff. So, so just to touch a little bit more on that, the member, member salary line increase went from 56 to 60 is what we requested, uh, $4,000. Depending on the month um, or the quarter, members get six dollars and thirty cents. To the highest I've seen it is nine sixty an hour. More than about that, and it's they're paid for the time they're there. So if we do an hour or a call for an hour, they get paid nine dollars and sixty three cents to, to leave their paid job and, and come in. Um, the officers get a little bit more. Myself, uh, as the assistant chief, I get a little bit more, but you know, the, the stock numbers, 963, across the town in South, or across the river, South Berwick is paying $13 an hour. And started with 14 Basically, um, I've done all the research, and our fire department and myself are the lowest paid fire department chief in the area. So that's not something I'm very proud of. When I know my guys are just as competent, if not better, when I go to fires and incidents with other communities, my guys are just as good. I just feel they should be recognized for that. Oh, sorry. So, <laughs> sorry. John, but, so this has come up before. I've asked the question before. If we're a volunteer fire, and I, because of my background, I need to ask the question, but as a volunteer fire department, we're paying points. Um, whatever the points are worth, the points are worth. But if you're not a volunteer fire department and you have an hourly rate assigned to people, you've slipped into the employment arena where people would be paid as employees. And so which one are we? Because so it's we're paid for a long time. Right, that's a volunteer. Yeah? So, so, so the way that we mm -hmm. do it. So are they paying, do, are taxes taken out? Yes. They are. Okay, that's great. Yeah. It's That's good. I can sit back and be quiet. I'm, I'm happy. I'm good. So, so it's a but good question. If you'd like me to kind of walk through the, the point system. The only th well, the only thing I would say is that you couldn't pay somebody under minimum wage if you are, in fact, paying them as an employee, which 683 or whatever is not minimum wage. Right. Really? So you just have to be careful because you get to walk one way or walk the other. And I have a I can send you a little thing on that. Yeah, we've been down this road before. Right, no, I know. Yeah. Does everybody else understand how the point system works? It will be helpful. Yeah, so, so, so basically, you take the 56000 that we have this year, we divide it in four for each quarter. Members are paid per quarter. So once a quarter, we submit payroll. For every call that they come to, um, <coughs> night trainings, other department activities, they get a point per hour. The crew chiefs get an extra point per incident. Lieutenants get an extra two. Captain gets an extra three. Deputy chief gets four. I get five. So, and with that extra points is the added responsibility that we have in that position. Um, and that's per incident. So if I'm on a 10 hour incident, I get the extra five, so I would get you know, 15 points for that entire incident. Um, we take all the points for a given quarter, divide that by the quarterly salary line, and that gives us a per point dollar amount. If a member earns 100 points, we 
you take that amount, times it by 100, and that's what they get paid. And the whole reason we do that is, is that we have no idea knowing in any given quarter how many calls we're going to have, how many hours people are going to be there. You know, we've had incidents that we've been at for 22, 26 hours. We have medical aids that are usually an hour. There's a huge range, and, and there's just no telling. And that's why I say you see the huge range in the point value per quarter because we can't control that. Um, we've seen call volume increase. You know, when I first started 15 years ago, we were 120, 130 calls. We're now going to be up over 200. And, and you know, the projection is, is that will continue. So even though we're increasing the salary, the actual amount that we're paying the members per hour of time hasn't actually changed that much in the last three years. And I think the question that we've had in the past is like, can you just be helped in the beginning? Is what what is that averaging out to be? And it's what was the range again? Was so so in the last three years, it was low six. The, the highest actually was, both the highest and lowest, interestingly, were this year. Um, this last quarter was 963, Q2 um, was five dollars and some change. I think, I think it's helpful to know that, sorry. No, go ahead. I think it's helpful to know what, what that rate is. You know, it's, it's, it's very low compared to, you know, any, any other fire department that pays an hourly rate. And I think it's, it's uh, that's a number that I would I would just add, you know, what you're describing is a, it, where the point system varies, or the, the dollar amount of the point system varies, um, leans you more into the volunteer pool. Mm -hmm. So you could be under the 725, but I would also, you know, reiterate what John said that it's a lot cheaper to have a volunteer pool and pay them more than to have to have a paid department, which I don't believe this town could really support. Could not. Right. Yeah, they never could. Yeah. Right. So. Um, I think for the budget is immense. So there's no way you'd want to hear the numbers if it comes to it. No, I know. But it's a, I'll send that to you, Kim, just so you. I have a booklet that kind of helps you stay in the volunteer piece because you have to be careful with the, if your stipend becomes a wage, you kind of fall into the employment piece, which you're not near. Um, I mean, it is a wage, but it's really not a wage. But it will help you a little bit. Cool. You know, the other thing that also is, is our, has been affected by our members is the spin-off from the PD. Sure. With the P, PD being as understaffed as they've been, there's been times where, you know, at night there's no police coverage. Not, they have their vehicles and they have to respond from their home, just like we would do. So we're working into PD type situations as a fire department, trying to take control until they arrive. So that could be from an overdose to an issue with a gun to anything else that it's not our ball game, but somebody has to attend to that. And you don't know who that somebody is. It's usually me or Sean. We've taken over uh, accidents because they do not have enough staffing, traffic control, and those issues is usually a PD function. It's shifted all over the fire department. Our guys have been training in that so we can make sure we protect our people. But we've got a spin-off from Ottawa what the PD used to do because of their lack of staff. And we've addressed it a little bit, but it, it still, you know, scares the hell out of me if I get a call at 2 in the morning and it's something with a gun. But somebody's got to go until I can get a PD officer there. They try to rely a little bit on some mutual aid help, whether it be South Florida or Dover. I can request the same thing, but uh, our people will not go into certain situations until we have the proper manpower and agencies to handle that stuff. So that's another issue we've been dealing with. We've seen an uptick really recently in fact not only the COVID thing, but we're getting back into the drug overdose thing. That's been big the last few months over the years. So we're dealing with all these added issues that they're not going to go away. Um, small increase in the next items with the chief expense. Um, 275 to 500. Uh, we are seeing an increase in some of these long duration events. Uh, if we have people come in mutually to cover our town, we don't have you know, 
we have a kitchen, but we don't have food and stuff there to offer to make them. So we usually have to bring in pizza or something because they're away from their home station where their food is. And, and we have to provide water and food and things like that you know, at, at the normal hours. So we, we did see a, an increase in that. Uh, our two biggest call volume in our whole total is usually either us going or somebody coming to us. And our second is EMS or medical aid stuff. Those are our two biggest call volumes. So that's the one reason why we were asking for the increase of that. Uh, we had living in our station a couple of times this year. They live for five hours. They show up at 3 o'clock in the afternoon and I'm leaving at 8 at 9. The proper thing to do is take care of their needs. So that's what that line falls on. Uh, the next two uh, firefighters are Gear and Gear is getting more expensive. We are required under NFPA 1851 to replace gear every 10 years. Um, it's a federal requirement. Uh, if the town chooses not to do that, then somebody gets hurt. Um, the first thing they do is take all your hose, all your gear, and it goes in a box and then it goes away um, to the federal government to be inspected. Year has gone from seven thousand to eight thousand to almost nine thousand dollars now. Um, it, it just it's getting more expensive. Companies switched from making firefighter gear to you know, mask, PPE, all of that. Um, so unfortunately, we, we did request an increase from eight thousand to eighty five hundred to try to stay up with that. Um, even with that, we put a request into the CIP for more gear. Um, we are severely behind. Um, we probably have almost half the members that are not really here at this point. A lot of the issue like that, like Sean said, when Berwick lost their captain a few years ago, they received some heavy fines after the investigation was done because of you know, some lack of training needs, some equipment needs and whatnot. Um, there was some areas that we could send guys off and get them trained and we could stretch the gear thing out. Well, those loopholes are closed and the door is slammed shut. So if I have to send somebody out to get trained, they need to be in gear that's 100% within date. And I do have two guys which we're going to send in the fall. So we'll mix and match gear. I may have a member that's not showing up an awful lot, so I may use his gear to send this guy to school because his gear is okay. And it's just not the proper way of doing things. When we have gear which is old and outdated, we keep it at the fire station as an extra set, so if we all went out someplace and got our gear trashed at a fire or blood covered from an accident or something, we have a spare set. So, uh, but we also know that spare set may not be in date, so we're kind of pushing the envelope here, but we are aware of what we're doing. So we kind of have to play that game. Gear now, just a turnout coat and a pair of turnout pants is close to $3,000 for those two pieces of equipment. To outfit a guy with helmets, boots, gloves, hoods, and all those equipment that he needs, we're pushing close to $5,000 per guy. And it only has a 10 year lifespan. There's nothing we can do with that. A lot of stuff that we have, it's got a time stamp on it, and we have to keep evolving and try to manage that. We're getting a, a lot better than we were. With Sean's help, we have an awful lot of sheets like we have in front of us with the budget stuff, with all the things that we need to track, whether it be vehicles, equipment, gear, training. We're right where we need to be, which is, hasn't always been that way in the past. So. Uh, we just constantly try to push forward as best we can. I, uh, have do all 24 have their own gear? What was that? Do all 24? In fact, they do. Yeah. They have to. But not all 24 have gear in date. But they all do. Yeah. So 14 set out of that 24? Pardon me? 14 out of the 24 right now have gear that has at least some things expired. Uh, and you have to be fit for your gear. So much like anything else, right? It has to be sized for the individual. You can't you know, right. wear somebody else's pants because they fall down. They don't protect you not long enough. All of those things. Um, so unfortunately, mm -hmm. it's very specific. But I think the don't chiefs go, don't go tell them. Yeah. Old, I'll tell them. I have my gear's been out of date for six years, and I don't plan on replacing it because. That money needs to go to guys that are going in the building and doing the job. I, my job is to supervise and manage. Doesn't mean I can't go in, I may have to go in if it's an emergency. But 
I'm not getting my stuff replaced because the members need it more than I do. May not be agreeable, not the right thing, but that's just the way that I'm taking care of that line of business. Uh, so the second line item of equipment, we increased that by 500. Um, if you look at this year's budget, we're, we're over on our equipment line. Um, stuff just continues to get more expensive. It's specialized equipment. It has dates on it, all of those things. So we're trying to uh, to stay up with that. Um, Can I answer a question on that? Sure. Well, are you guys working toward trying to get to the point where everybody's doing it? Or are, we, are we proposing? What when will you be? I know you're adding five hundred dollars. It doesn't seem very much when when we talk about how, how your deficit. So how are you getting to the full compliance? Yeah, and that's what I was saying with the CIP. So okay. the CIP funding that we've requested. Would get us. Yeah, we're also looking like a warrant on it to jumpstart us and get us back to where we need to be. Gotcha. Okay. That's, that's been an approach to the select board. Try to get ahead, catch up. I'm not getting hit, I'm just trying to catch up. Okay. Keep our head above water. So it's not your operating budget. So it's good. I mean, you know, See, like you said, it's a good point. You said $500. I can buy a helmet for $500. That's just the cost of what it is. It's ridiculously crazy what the costs are to, to take care of these items, but we have the choice. We, we try to do two a year, with 24 members, two a year. What's this at 12 years? To replace everybody's gear. And that's a 10 year expiration date. So, you know, we're, we're getting better. We're also trying to keep in mind that we can't just say, hey, take us from, you know, 8,000 to 12,000 or 13,000, right? To be able to, to do that, what we need to slowly increase the line items and you know we're, we're trying to be respectful and you know, for a lot of that's just the, the increase in our costs. With our tracking and what we have on our gear line, we have a projected time frame where we're placing all this stuff. So we're almost to the point where we can keep the funding increasing just by the little bit we're asking for, we can stay ahead of that and maintain the, the gear uh, date line. Are there sure. no grants? You know, are there oh, grants? Oh, we look, we always look for grants, yeah. We, we're mean, out the there all COVID, the time. Is there anything them. that says, let's get everybody dressed better? No. <laughs> no, no monies and gear? That, that money's going towards, like, equipment, communication things. Doesn't go so much for gear. You can find some things for uh, uh, things within your station, like exhaust systems and whatnot, but it doesn't specifically address gear needs because that's something typically that fire departments take care of within their own budget and line items. Usually the grant stuff is, is larger ticket items that are, everybody's fighting for. 5000 and out, that's a pretty steep sure is. number, I would think. Sure and is. if you were to talk to you know one of the other departments are around here, every time a new guy starts, they get two sets of gear for that person. So when you talk about, you know, can we look at having uh, you know, a Dover cover us or a you know, summer's worth or whatever, the reason their cost to do that is so much is because they have to put an extra, you know, two to three guys on and, you know, with their salary and, and whatnot, and gear, costs, and all of that, be a lot more than what we're currently doing. Uh, cost to about four or five. You, you we'd asked a little bit before about a permanent person, for a permanent guy in the fire department right now, about a hundred thousand dollars right. per oh, man. Yeah. Between salary, pennies, everything else that comes with it, it's in that hundred thousand yeah. dollar range. So um, hose and emergency equipment testing, hose went from two thousand to three thousand, and emergency equipment testing went from one thousand to three thousand. Um, is, is another one of those areas that it goes bad after a certain amount of time. We have to replace it. Um, and then the emergency equipment testing is a, a, a big jump. Um, part of that is due to the air filling station that we installed last year. Part of it is due to the fact that the packs that we purchased in 2015 are now at a point where we're starting to have to test. So the, the packs that you see firefighters wear on their back, there's an air bottle. And then there's an actual respirator and, and everything. Those have to be tested. The actual physical part of the pack has to be tested every year. It's called an annual flow test. If we don't test those, again, if something happens, 
cop is liable. Um, the actual air bottles have to be tested every five years. They're covered under a DOT exception that requires so every five years that they be tested. Um, that's not stuff that we can control. Again, it's NFPA requirements, and, and that's why we've um, increased that line significantly. Some of that was what we used to pay the thousand dollars for the community mutual aid line, which is now gone. That's what some of that funding used to do. We used to be able to send some of that out and get it done through a big group thing, but that's gone. So we have to absorb that. <coughs> talked about the line for community mutual aid has gone away. Um, the fuel line uh, was decreased last year. Um, the select board, um, after we submitted our budget, reduced our fuel line from $2,800 down to $2,200. Um, we really can't control fuel costs and it continues to rise, so you know, it probably makes sense to move that back to the $2,800. It's going to be an area that we over spend this year. Um, fortunately, we have to put fuel in the trucks. Everybody has to drive the trucks a certain number of hours every year to remain compliant, safe on the roads. So, um, and then you know, they have to be filled to be able to respond to calls. Last year when we submitted our budget, it was level funded across the board. That was the request that was given to us by the select board, and that's what we did. Um, when it got down to crunch time and, and having to make numbers fit, Two or three thousand dollars that they took out of the budget right at the end. That was one of the line items. They took some out of hose. There's three or four line items that they just, you know, grabbed some funding for. So basically, last year we took a cut from what we had before. So. That is every department took a cut. That's the slug board. Every department took a cut because the budget committee cut the entire budget by 70000 So everyone took a cut. And you have bottom line authority to move your money from one account to another. So if you ran out of fuel money, you could move something else. Yeah, it, I'm not, I'm, I'm just, just saying. Just presenting to you guys. I wouldn't, we wouldn't yeah. have taken it if it wasn't <laughs> yeah. taken away from us. Yeah. So yeah. it is what it is. And that's the same thing with the hose, right? That was the other mm -hmm. area that they caught. But you hadn't bought hose for years. Yep. So it was a budget line that hadn't been spent for several years. I think it was spent, it just went somewhere else. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Chief, do you think this budget's going to work? I mean, you, you're work. saying you're under underfunded, uh, you guys aren't getting paid, we expect them to go out there and uh, in harm's way, and, and you don't even have uh, a schedule for when they're all going to have enough equipment to do it. Um, we do it just a matter why of Why are we kicking the pan here? Well, I'm trying to, I'm not, I'm trying I'm not to trying keep trying it. I'm not trying to ask you to spend more money, but I'm trying to say, uh, you know. I totally understand where you're coming from. We're trying to keep it in a, in, in a realm that everybody can, can accept it and absorb what needs to be done. Yeah, I could add uh, an awful lot to all of these lines to get us to where we need to be, but, but I know that's not feasible. It's not going to happen. So we're trying to do it incrementally so it can be absorbed in and and not be a huge burden on the taxpayer. But uh, you know, something as simple as um, you know, the, the radio line item. You know, to get the salary increases, we remove from the radio line item as a compromise. The the challenge that that gives me is I now have two different types of radios that I'm asking members to carry into a building fire. The emergency alert button is in two different spots on those radios. So not only am I asking you to go into a building and risk your life, I'm telling you that depending on which radio you grab, which apparatus you come on, you may need to hit a different button, hit a button in a different location if you're in an emergency in a building. And that's why originally when we did this, it was, let's do it as a four year, let's get the two engines, the primary vehicles done first, and let's get the other vehicles quickly behind that. To your point, we're kicking it down the, the can and moving it. But if we don't pay the members, we're not going to have people to go into the building and it doesn't matter if we have radio set in the station. Uh, just a couple questions. 
Um, how many radios did you guys buy in the Warren article under capital? It's set up so we can only buy a certain number a year that came out of that 15. So, how, so right, so under capital you bought? So, so we bought base radio, mobile radios for each of the trucks, and we bought 10, which was enough for the engines. So you bought 10 radios? If it was 10 or 12, I'd, I'd have to go back and look. Uh, so, so that so was out of capital, and yes. this is um, this is like a rate, so you're also buying out of operating. So the, the agreement when we went to that to meet the, the number that they wanted us to hit within the, this capital improvement plan was replace the core radios on the engines, the actual radios in each of the trucks, and then for the Rothwell support vehicles, the forestry, the tank truck, um, the utility, those vehicles, we'd replace them over the next four years. It's working now. So, so the, the radios that you're buying out of the operating budget, uh, how many of those same radios did you buy at Capital? So all of the ones that, so like, the three we bought this year yeah. are the same that we bought under the capital plan yep. three years ago. And how many was that? We bought three this year. No, out of capital. Twelve. Twelve. So you, or 12, so you have 15 new radios. Right. Okay. Um, and, and my other question was, um, the hose, it's been in the budget for the last three or four years. How come you guys haven't bought it? It's been approved in the budget. So we used the hose funding last year to fix the tank truck okay. the year it's before that we used it for maintenance. It, it's yeah, we're not using it just for home. It's been shifted around to be used someplace else. They've they taken the bottom line because we're coming up short somewhere else and that's just been moved around. If, if I had everything all taken care of and the hose was right there and I could spend it, I would. Mm -hmm. But um, we need some, but we're, we're managed to get by what we have. But that's one of the ones we're able to move. Because there's some other ones. We can't move all of them, but there's some we can. But for instance, if you look at this year, um, it shows that we're overspent in the equipment line item. Well, a lot of that was actually hose, and it just got put into the wrong line item. We had to buy new forestry hose, we had to buy um, new suction hose, so when it got put in, mm -hmm. it, it got put in under equipment instead of coming out of the hose line, unfortunately. Thank you. To accentuate what you're saying, your 2020 budget came in at 101.1%, so you were overspent in 2020, yet you still didn't buy some of the things that you had planned to buy because you had to spend it on other things. Yes. So so obviously there's no slack. There's no slack. Like no slack in here. None. It hasn't been for years. We just keep shuffling the bottle caps around and try to make it fit. They have a lot of they have a lot of old equipment. Um, like two years ago, it was the furnace, unexpectedly that we yeah, had station, to come up with the money. Station we had itself to needed an awful lot of work. And so I mean, they just don't they don't have enough money going in towards replacing the stuff sooner than having an emergency breakdown and not being able to fund it. And that's what's been happening. Things have been I don't want to say neglected, but they've just been pushed back and pushed mm -hmm. back and pushed back. And they sometimes they all service at the same time. Mm -hmm. Have to be repairs. A lot of station, the station maintenance line item took a big hit last year because of what we needed to do. And we've done some upgrades and things that need to be taken care of this year, but uh, we're still playing catch up all the way down the line. But to, to, uh, to address your catch, catch question again is, I mean, we didn't, you know, we can't come in and say we need, you know, a 20% increase for this stuff. It just wasn't going to fly. So we're picking the areas we know that have the, the biggest issues for us to keep ourselves up. Protected and not open up a liability. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, any other questions on any of the line? I think we've covered them all, right, Sean? We covered all, all the ones that we increased. We made a commitment to give a little back to try to offset a little bit. There's one line item in here that we have zero control over. Um, I can't change it. Um, it's the uh, dispatching fees. Those come from Dover, they set the rate. I don't even know what it is until they, until they send the bill. Um, they take care of all of our dispatch needs. I know it's an expensive line item. Uh, I know a lot of local departments have switched to other uh, dispatching agencies, and they haven't been very successful with it. Um, Dover is very good to us. 
at the end of the programs which we need, we can also use them to to, to uh, get additional information that we need that's just not fire related, whether it needs a, to get call numbers and call back people and whatnot. So that's the one thing in this whole budget that we just can't manipulate. When do they bill you for that, Mark? Because it's zero right now. Usually it's the first of the year. Okay. I don't know if it'll go up. I anticipate it goes up. It goes every year. What they did over there now is they just changed it to a new CAD system. The computer aided dispatch system, yeah. they completely revamped their whole system. Um, and we're still recovering, trying to catch up with some of the issues that we've been having for dispatch. So I'm hoping that they can be maintained, mm -hmm. but I don't have any uh, faith that that's going to happen. There'll be a slight jump in there as we're anticipating. So, just a comment about that. Um, I noticed that it's doubled in the last couple of years, but we didn't double it for this year's budget yet. I expect that will probably change. So if you if you look at this um, the last two years, we've appropriated around six thousand, six and a half thousand, but it's been twelve, almost thirteen, almost twelve the next year, and we, for some reason it wasn't. You um, mean for dispatching fees? Yeah. Right. The actual yeah. dispatching fee is the six thousand dollar one. The rest of that that you're seeing that increase, Kim, was they upgraded uh, the their whole system four years ago. And again, it was $60,000 that they wanted the town to pay. The town, again, did not have the funding to do that. So I set up an MOU through Dover to pay it on a per year basis over the next four, four or five years. That's why you're seeing that bump. That's paying back another upgrade, which they did, that we didn't have the funding for. But the actual line item for us is the $6,000 one. The other one is to pay off the MOU. So do we have to pay that again this year? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we still need to budget. Right, but I'm, I'm just saying it's not dispatching fees that are six thousand dollars. Okay, it's two different things that that money is coming. But it's under one line item. What's that? It's two different things, but it's in the same line. Yeah. With fifty percent funding, essentially. Well, so it's not enough there. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's where that that dispatching fee comes. Mm -hmm. Well. I think the point would be, does it make sense to have a separate line item mm -hmm. to represent basically the loan that right over gave Robert? Yeah, I think we're at the end of it. I looked at the MOU, I'll dig it up, but now we're, we're right just about to the end of that. So maybe 2022 is probably... It might be. I will, I will find that out before we get to the final. Could you send this out, please? The MOU. It's here somewhere. I'll get it for you, but I know it's here. I know it's searching for Caroline's computer, right? So I know it's here. Do you have it? I have a copy of it somewhere, I think. I'll it's find it. It's probably easier for you to find it than me. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'll, I'll do some digging. I'll ask, I'll ask Chuck, too. Thanks. There you go. That's the guy to find these things. But it was. It was an upgrade to their whole system. They put a million-dollar upgrade up, and we had, had, we were, we had an allocation of it. Yeah, and ours was 60 grand that they needed for our end. They revamped the whole tower that sits up on Garrison Hill. And they added another one down by their sewer treatment plant on Miller Road. They added that equipment. And that, that was kind of our portion that we had to maintain. So I have a question about that. And I don't know if this is the fire department or the select board. If something like that happens, it feels like it's almost like a piece of equipment, like a new vehicle for the fire department. It's like a capital expense more than an operating expense. Is it possible to put something like that in the CIP? A little bit late now because you're almost at the end of that with MOU, but in the future, is that something that, could, and it may not be possible to resolve that question tonight, but it seems like that's a capital expense. It's a very good that we're being charged by another town. It's not our capital expense, but we're paying it like a capital expense. Um, that's a very good question, and it's something that I've kind of challenged um, the budget committee and the former select board about a number of times where how we determine capital is um, really ambiguous. Um, you know, it, it, sometimes we're paying, like, sometimes we're actually using it as a capital, um, even, you know, even with the extended life, and then other times it might have an extended life, but they don't use it as capital for the operating budget. So we're all over the place on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's a good point. And this would be a rather tricky one because it's not Rollins, but it's a charge from another town, like the contract instead of us actually owning that equipment. But I just thought. Any other questions about the presentation? Yeah.
Oh, I thought you were raising your hand. Mm -hmm. uh, one last thing is, is just on our budget sheets that we have in front of us, and actually, I don't think that all Kim just distributed, but you guys are shown as 65% as spent this year. Um, I assume, and I'm just going to clarify, that that's just because you haven't probably purchased all the things that are on here, or the latest one you have has 65? Yes. So, so I did numbers before we got here. Um, of that, there's roughly $18,000 that's controllable by us. So part of it's the quarterly salary for Q4. Um, part of it is the answering dispatch fee for the 64.51, um, and then there was one other line item that hasn't we've spent it, but it hadn't been actually billed for. Um, if you look, we ordered hose in May. We just got the last piece of it and received the invoice for it. Yeah. yeah, so there's a couple of those items. Wow. Yeah, Chuck, Chuck has just received it, I got last week. Yeah, but my, my point is you expect to be close to 100% spent this year. It's not, if we were if we were just judging like, a, oh, it's the third quarter, it should be 75. Oh, you're under, maybe you're going to be under by the end of the year. That's not going to happen. You guys are going to be fully No, I, I do not anticipate anything that's going to be under. In the nine years that I've been running the budget, we've never overspent. So we're not going to overspend it, and if there's anything left, it's going to be minimal. Right. There's not going to be anything in that we don't no, just, The way we looked at it last year is, is where, how much were we, uh, how much were we over appropriated by the end of the year? Well, not on the fire department, but on the whole budget. I and so, just to make the point clear that, that we're not, there's no slack here. Well, I know there's been discussions before that, uh, that the fire department had always seemed to turn some at the end. Well, I think those days are kind of gone because we're trying to catch up, as we've explained tonight. So we're, we're trying to, some of the big ticket items that are in here now are, are all taken care of, so we're manipulating some of the other stuff to make up for discrepancies, and uh, there won't be, there'll be minimal left. I think the challenge is, is you know, the maintenance line of it, we've got maybe a hundred dollars left, and we've got three months left. Saying, John, you, you're going to utilize all the budget, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, like Sean's explaining, I, I would tend to not front load stuff. I kind of waited till a little further down the year before I would start making a lot of expenditures while I was out of our control this year. We just and we're going to meet Monday night, right? Select board meeting, we're going to do another, a regular select board meeting. Yeah. Well, I'll explain to you, we just had another, well, it was a fire truck issue. I explained it to Jack, and that expended all of our equipment and repair items. Um, I just want to make a comment. Um, so the budget that you have been given um, does show that the fire department was overexpended in 2019 and 2020. Um, I need to check these numbers because Caroline gave me this budget. Um, I know Mark, you said you haven't overexpended, but this budget doesn't reflect that. So I will check all of these numbers and make sure there aren't any errors in them. Okay, thanks. Anybody have any other questions? I know one. Forgive me, I got emotional. The, I've been listening to all of you for the last couple of months. When we talk about budget. What about the human life? What if somebody gets hurt? In my eye, you know, when the guys, when my tree came down on my house, they came and took it off. And then they said, I was talking to a few, this is going back about 20 years ago, 25. And they said, talking about gear. I went up to the, you know, the big meeting, and people are against it. And I says, what happens if somebody dies or somebody gets hurt? In my eye, we should be fully dated 100%. Put a capital improvement in there. Put a warrant on it. Because what's the cost of somebody getting hurt? The medical bills. Somebody lose a life, a limb. 
That's what I see. I mean, you know, I know we're trying to keep a budget down and keep it affordable for everybody. But you have to look at the safety part of it. And that's one item. I just couldn't look at the budget and Charlie brought up kicking a can down. That's safety gear, you, you can't go wrong. That should be automatic. You know, we might not be able to get like a bigger companies, a two sets, maybe one set. You know, it's, we have to do better for our, our men and women that are risking their lives. And, you know, police officers out there on the road, safety items is something you can't skip on. And God forbid, it's like the Chief said, somebody gets hurt, died, they get fined, and then the town or city is paying out lots of fines, then you got a big capital. It's uh, safety in my eyes, I don't care what it costs. It has to be complete for all of our employees, even if they're volunteer, even if they're, you know, they have to. I mean, sorry. And, and I appreciate that because, you know, I, I was one of the ones that helped pull Cabinet Barns out of the building and had to help collect all of the gear that was associated with that. And it's not something that I want to see this town go through. And, you know, it's something that, that the Chief and I worry about every day. And to kind of rebut a little bit on that too, also, the town as a whole uh, has been very good. When I got into my position, a lot of people just don't understand what the fire department business is. Until you walk in our shoes, you'll never understand. Because it's not just a job, it's a lifestyle change. And I tried to explain that when the horn goes off, you gotta go. No matter what you're doing, you go. Um, so I, I approached it when I got the chief's job as education. The only way we're gonna get things that we need to keep ourselves from getting in a bind is to educate, and this is what we did top meeting. And I'm very sad that that's gone because that's where a lot of this information would have come out as we discussed it over and over and I could get that information out to, the, to a larger group of people. Not that we ever had a whole bunch of people at town meeting, but we had a fair amount so they could understand what we were trying to do. The town has been supportive in most of the big items which we needed from, from getting the new fire truck, which was essential, but was a battle that it never really should have been. And we're on the verge of having to go through that again because our second one is getting close to failing. Um, the town has been supportive on most everything we wanted, but it's not to the numbers that we need. And it's, it comes back to the fact that we just can't ask for a whole bunch because we know it's going to fail and not going to get there. So we're trying to piece it together as best we can. And again, I appreciate the support, and I'm sure everybody else here can understand what we're going through. But I also understand the monetary side of it. So it's, it's just difficult for us to try to do what we got to do. Every time, the, every time the call goes off, it's stress. Yeah. Those two guys that have to carry the load. Any other questions? No, I, I uh, appreciate what Pat said, and I, I sort of maybe I ramble a little bit, but I'm pretty passionate about what I do. Yeah. So. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for it. Great presentation. <laughs> I actually got to see it. Yeah. <laughs> don't have that word. Airport. Have fun. Yeah, so pretty. We'll see you tomorrow night, right? The next item yes. will be. Um, yes, we will be here tomorrow night. Should we get uh, school? Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Okay. Hey, Eric. Right. Kim, my apologies. I didn't realize that you did compared to the end of last year, but it didn't really bounce back to the previous levels. I guess, um, I mean, it's, it's such a drastic drop in numbers in both the school, the, you know, the grade school, as well as Marshall. And I guess that's good for this time, but I mean, if we don't understand why those changes, we can budget for 138 at Marshwood, and next year it can be 152. Yeah. And we'll really know. So, I mean, can can we get the SAU to do some analysis of 
I mean, we knew which students were in the school, let's say, at the end of 2019. These are the ones that are missing. Do we understand why they're missing? Are they hope did they go to private school? Did they go to home school? Did they move out of town? I mean, not knowing that, I guess, is, is leaving us open to misbudgeting for the future on the bad side for, for 2022, yeah. 2023. Yeah, we're definitely, you know, we just sort of got this information last week, and we're trying to figure out how to get to the bottom of it. Okay. Um, but it's, it's for sure a concern as we go into budget season. We don't want to under budget or mm -hmm. obviously over budget. Um, so we're, we're going to have to try to figure out how, how we can analyze that. Isn't this somewhat of a trend that we're seeing like everywhere? It's not just Toronto. So it's, it's the pan I think a lot of it potentially is related to the pandemic. But still, I'm sure they're being taught. They're private, they homeschool, you know. And they probably have some stats like that. Yeah. I know for a fact Marshwood is down a lot. Really? Right now. And then all the public schools are. Mm -hmm. So does anybody have specific questions for? Or you've given the sort of the, you know, the summary, right? The yes. Highlights? Those are the highlights from my perspective. Any specific plan questions anybody has? I'll just throw out just a little quick. Are there any impending dooms as far as, you know, equipment or roofs or furnaces or asbestos, anything that you can see that might happen this year? Or? Impending dooms as in <laughs> surprises? Yeah. Um, no. It, we are concerned about the boilers, um, but they've been limping along and we're probably going to address those in our budget proposals for next year. So that's really the only potential doom. Um, and we have a capital reserve fund that could be used for that for emergencies um, if something were to happen. But I, I don't think there's anything looming. Is our, we supplied uh, 
bottled water to our residents. So that's that will be going away next year. So that's uh, we have a concern with the propane. We are currently investigating. Um, the numbers don't match up to what our bid was last year. So if the shard is is ongoing, they're going to need to uh, give us the numbers. It could be just a pipe up. So that is a uh, Currently, we're at 72 percent a year, third quarter. Office supplies was another one that we were over uh, budget because of the mass mailings we had to, and some of that uh, water came out of that as well. And general supplies was just basically um, our ink for our printing has gone up, and we. And the cost of toner and everything has gone up. We're exploring for Costco staples, but like everybody else, it's cheaper just to do it in house. But it's the ink that gets you, the toner. It's, uh, hmm, what are you doing? Any questions for the wire side? So we're at 72 percent. Yes, sir. And that's and you, you're you have some things you talked about. Uh, we're overexpended, but we're obviously underexpended on some other items, and so we're yeah. balancing. Or are there yes. things not showing yet? It's so we're we're still waiting for some invoices to come in on some of the projects, and they're just slow to come. Like a lot of the expenditures will come under asset management, which we. Um, got approved for this year, and um, we really need everybody to fill out their median household income survey, because what that does is think about a million dollar project. We get funding. We get principal forgiveness. That equates to $100,000 of savings. You might not think that's a lot. Now, add the interest on, say, the current rate. I just went through a presentation with Louise today with it. And it, that hundred thousand could be paid to three fifty, but add extra um, interest. So if everybody could just fill it out and send it in, it is anonymous. One person, okay, let's take me, my family, Lucy family. Say Charlie's on the payroll. He says checks off that, gives it to Denise. Denise opens it, and we have a control number. And we all have a number. So the only person that really sees the Flusies had sent it in is Charlie. But they don't know what I made inside. They don't know. They just, it's a series of protection for the homeowner, but the repairs. So it's really, would really help us to, for funding because. Uh, as you know, you know, infrastructure is aging, costs are going up. You know, we, we're working on the budget for the uh, coming year. We're getting our ducks in a row. You know, it's it's a daunting task. Like the chief, fire chief, you know, we can only do what's critical and and not overburden, you know, the repairs. And it's 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 really tough. And, uh, but that medium household income would greatly appreciate uh, the repairs to send it in. And, uh, yeah. uh, can you explain exactly how that's going to help you directly and what do you use that number for? Interest, um, say if we, we have to need like 75% of the large district. Could you speak a little louder, please? Uh, it's so large, hard behind that mask to hear what you're saying. The water district will use the, if we get the required amount of um, repairs, to send in their forms with their annual income. And what that does is we qualify for SRF funds, okay. all, all sorts of grants, free money. 
I mean, without the medium household income, it's all on the repair. 100% on our backs. And you might not think $100,000 off a million dollar project. We just had a 35% increase on piping. I'm hoping we don't have any problems this winter, but it's like this because every department in the whole country is like cringing and trying to get parts and pieces. So, you know, it's um, really tough out there. So it's really important. So it just opens up to like, you know, all sorts of extra funding. Doesn't mean, you know, you know, SRF funds, you can put in your wish list. And then you can make out your warrant articles to what is feasible for the repairs. Not to say that you're going to get everything funded. It's just that, yes, the money is available for a community, but you're going to need to say, hey, we need that a water transmission line. I, hypothetically. Right, know. because the, I think the premise is that within the district, the median income is lower than yes. the entire town. Because the one that was done years ago was the whole town. So when we ventured upon this uh, down the road, we stressed to the state PES. And Louise came down and he talked to us, and I said, well, there's only like, say, 700 and some odd caps. Let's, let's just say there's 700 people that has to put the bill. And our last mean income survey was for 2,600 people. It doesn't represent the district. Right. Right. So that's, so it's big. this one, if we get people to, do the medium household income survey, get it in, demonstrate that the we will actually, we're expecting to be available for a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, if, 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 we're, if our assumptions are correct, because we're going from 2,600 people down to around 700, 800 people. Mm -hmm. So that's a significant drop. Mm -hmm. And when we talk to um, Louise about it, it's, like the chief said, we, we need to promote what we do, how important it is, and get education. Everybody looks at red and white, blue and white fire, <laughs> but water and sewer, as long as it comes out of the tap and my like, toilet flushes, or like me for I'm on my septic, it works, you forget about it. So that's that's why it's so important for funding. Like the Willow Street project. You know, the last board got a really good interest rate for us. I mean, at today's rates, rates have gone up. So we, you know, we jumped on that. But what if we had Willow Street? Was it? The other two streets. I'm still, I'm still learning where all the streets are. No, uh, Willow Street. Pine. Was it Pine? Uh, Pine. It was the adjacent road roads that go. Locus, Locus, Locus. Locus. Yeah, thank you. If hypothetically, if we had SRF funding, we could probably went out the bid for that whole block. Mm -hmm. Hypothetically. Mm -hmm. But since it was on the ratepayers tax, we had to just do Willie Street. So that's what opens up for us to get the forgiveness, grants, mm -hmm. free money. You know, it's, you know, not to say we're going to get it every year, but instead of Rollins Street in the past, the state, you're a wealthy community, which I always heard and I never understood it until I started taking asset management classes and talking and educating myself. I said, well, we can't go by the whole time because we're not all on the, the water and sewer district. Mm -hmm. So now we're correcting the ship for the state to, so once we get all that data, they'll, it's, if you go on the uh, UNC database, it's where uh, the rates, it'll show where each, the people that participate, and you can see where you fall. Well, when I did Rollinsford, we were in the red. 
because me and household income was just was off the right. I mean, it, it didn't represent the, the ratepayers. So if you get this done, it opens up the, a lot of funding and grants. Good. So just just one point of clarification. Sure. The members of the district are the people who live in the units. Right. So if there's a property owner that owns a building in downtown but doesn't live in Rollinsford or in the district, the property owner is not the individual whose income is being assessed. The income assessment is the people who live inside the apartments in town. Right. And so, uh, and they are also the voting members of the district. They yes. don't necessarily understand that in the way we'd like them to, but they are the voting members of the district, not the property owners who do not live in the district. So I think that kind of helps to understand a little bit why it would be a different median income than in the outer <coughs> outer oh, outside yeah, of the absolutely. district. And I had a question for you, Pat, sure. about, and I'm sorry that I have to ask you this question, I should know it, but the, you said that the Willie Street project came in over budget. Yes. What was it originally projected to be? Was it like 120 or 140,000? We, well, Willie Street total is 200,000. That include the um, contractor, right here is engineering, material and supplies. This, uh, we, Total budget was two hundred thousand. I'm sorry. This total about budget for two hundred thousand. But did what you exceed the, that? What was, was you it said it? Yeah, I thought you said we, we went yeah, over a little bit. I think um, it's because of the asphalt and the piping increase, which was out of out of our control, and the cost of uh, the fittings went up drastically. I mean, we we had a bid sheet, and of course, you know, like every bid sheet. When a project comes in on the bid, they always have 20 to 30 percent leeway. Mm -hmm. I'm projecting that if we have to bid something out in the upcoming year, that number is going to go up to at least 35 to 40 percent mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the raw material is up 35 percent. DJ Prescott told told us this, this: grass is hard to come, copper is hard to come to buy. Water meters, it's everything is just leapfrogging. Lucky for us, um, we uh, we can go to neighboring towns and and you know buy or borrow and we replace in kind, which we which we ought to do, but it's still at an increase to our our budget because. It was un unforeseen. Really well, I, I just everything. was trying to remember the original bid price, but it do, I mean, I th all the increases are understandable, but I just wondered how much more it was. And yeah, I, I actually can go back and look at my. If you look at the very bottom, it also yeah. has right down the most the square, it has all outlined for the Holy Street. But not the actual expense. No, that's right, not the actual. It, it shows what you right, budgeted right. for yeah. is that it's all right. spent, but it doesn't show what you actually spent on it at this point. But And well, how does that well, tie into well, your overall budget? I okay. don't know. I understand what you're saying, Charlie. I understand what you're saying. I'm not trying but, to put you on the no, spot. No, no. Uh, I totally understand what you're saying. We budget, but what year to date what we uh, ex uh, expend. So the project was bonded, so it shows up as payments yeah. on a loan. Correct. And we've already paid I think two installments on on that bond. Okay, thanks Pat. Michelle? Just a quick question, Pat. Do you have any idea what percentage of those um, surveys you got back? We're still compiling. We're, we're doing a second mailing, so a second reminder, so that only tells me the first round we didn't get enough. So 
do you folks count them, or are you, no, no. Oh, you're sending them, they go somewhere else? When, when you I'm trying it, to remember, I didn't when, when, when I did, you, I mail, <laughs> you fill it out, yeah. it goes right to them. It goes to them, okay, so they're we, telling you. We do not touch them okay, at all. Gotcha. <laughs> we might get the ones to return, right. and we have to figure out, okay, did they move? We're in the process of doing that. Right. So we're waiting for them to give us the, the number. But I just got the email, we're doing a second mailing, so we didn't hit our threshold. And do you know what, what is the threshold? It's I not 100%. I believe it's 75, we need 70% or 75, I have to double check. But we, the email just came out, we're doing a, a second mailing. And if worse comes to worse, we'll go. Well, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say, we are. Over and knock on people doors. don't understand it affects their rent. You know, if you're a tenant and right. you know, water and sewer goes up, your rent goes up. And a lot of times people don't understand that. Well, potentially, if we give the medium household income in place, we can get forgiveness of projects. Yeah. You know, right. It's but a savings to the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the rate payers. Instead of like right. Street, it's all on the backs of everybody out of the of the uh, right there in the district. So maybe the district could send out just a postcard that says, if you want your rates to if you want your rent to remain the same, fill out that form and get it that's, back. No, that's an excellent you idea. You can't you can't knock on doors because it's an independent consultant exactly. doing the survey. But I, I just meant some I was, type of education. Yeah, it's like. Um, you know, it's like a bright orange flyer that are, it's, it's going out to really brighten people. It's like, oh, what's this? And they'll, they'll, they'll see it. Have you sent a letter with your bills? That's the property That's owner, usually, though. Not the tenant. The tenant doesn't get the bills? No. no. Never? The property owner is the property responsible owners, but, party, but they would put it but, into their rent, and that's yeah, what people that disconnect people aren't going to pick up on. They might trust it to their tenants. Pat, getting back to that question, is it fair to say that probably the excess on the Willie Street project is in maintenance and repairs? Yes. Okay, because then that's why that's 149%, and that's why uh, it is reflected in your 72% overall for the three quarters. But the, the other added money when I'm the first thing is general solvent repair. Okay. Because we're going to do some upgrades to that and to the quarter well. But it is reflected in here, so that it, is. It, it just took a little study and come up with it. That's where you met. Uh, I just I was thinking from the last meeting we, we had a line asphalt wasn't how like you're still looking for that. And we got like five to eight thousand dollars worth of returns coming. But we can't reflect that till we pick up the, the pipe and check the check. So we have to kind of problem that. So it's re but it's reflected in the budget on lines yes. 16 and 17. Right. Okay. I really have Not 16 and 17. Two. Six, six, 16 and 17 are fixed expenses based on the loan. Distribution system. Yeah, it would be up above maintenance and repairs on the distribution system. Are you no, doing Line two. two. Okay. It's not broken oh, out oh, as oh, over, over yeah, expenditures for that particular yeah. project, but a maintenance. Yeah, but it's prepared, so. but that's where it is. So yeah. we move to the sewer. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Some um, okay. Some, some highlights of the um, our chemicals run up, and even though we're locked in, they hit us with the trucking. As I mean, you have a locked-in price, but it, it's it's.
it's always in trucks. I mean, there's no free trucking in the industry. It's just a way to say, oh, we're going to give you free trucking, but it's actually, it's, it's not. I mean, it's, it's, it's a joke. It's a fuel industry. charge. Fuel charge, a surcharge, <laughs> you know, the fuel skyrocketing. I'm like, no, I went to Concord this uh, today, and there's a gas station last week. I was up there delivering samples. It was three, 319. It was 340 today, yeah. a week later. So that's gasoline, so diesel's going up. I mean, so the uh, wastewater site, we had to do some... Um, um, drainage and, uh, and it came out uh, pavement. Uh, we, we had to help um, with, for the Willow Street project for the stormwater. And we had to put in a swale so it wouldn't be road like uh, the hill. So it's, uh, that's where that part of our maintenance went up. Chemicals, of course, went up. Uh, the, uh, we are still compounding the chemical costs for next year. The, uh, our suppliers are kind of, you know, they, they, you know, they don't know. I know there's a poor, um, it's tough to get dry goods. So it's not something we can stockpile. Like people says, well, why can't you stockpile eight drums of chlorine? You can't because chlorine is, will degrade in, in time. As soon as you crack the, the cap on there, two weeks it drops by 25% strength. Then in those two weeks you're down to 50%. So what you're doing is adjusting your pumps to go faster, using more product up. So that, I mean, that's one chemical that's easy to explain where our costs have went up, you know, we're price locked, because of trucking, we use very minimal compared. We use more chlorine for disinfection. And we use that a lot in the wastewater side for disinfection. So, and we had to swap to a different chemical for um, the process. We just couldn't get it. And uh, so, I think it was Alan we uh, had to go to. And uh, so, there's a system process change. But it's, it's the nature of the beast. We, we, if they don't have it, we have to switch to another chemical that does the same, but is more expensive. It's almost like buying prescription drugs at name brand or generic. And we always go for generic because it costs cheaper. But right now we're buying brand name chemicals, which the cost went up on the wastewater. Uh, would yes. You, would you say that uh, because of the chemical costs, next year's budget needs to increase the, the chemicals? And that, that's, yes. And, and so that's an anticipated, maybe a bigger increase than, than a normal year. Well, considering our material costs on certain things, like uh, our brass is a product, yeah. we're lucky for us we had a decent stock, but the really street kind of depleted, so we had to replenish. The supply chain so, issues are And once we get the, the pipe picked up, we can get that money back so we can allocate the um, for the product with those earmark, but it's held up right, right now. So yeah, chemicals are gonna go up. It looks like our fuel costs are going up. Propane, uh, I don't know if you saw anybody on natural gas in town, they're talking about a 30% uh, increase in natural gas for a bad winter and a normal winter is 22, so I'll bet our, our diesel K1 is all going to fall sick. So we're anticipating, you know, we're keeping the boilers, you know, maintain the propane units. We did have a propane unit that just, uh, very old, it just, or it's in the works being replaced. Good budget, getting the money on, on that. You know, just uh, looking at our heating, um, we completed the chemical sheds down the wastewater plant. Those are 100% uh, um, done. There's there's a chemical sheds were built. They're heated now. Monitoring units are in place. It's um, 
all that stuff is done in house by the staff, and um, we are very pleased the way it came out. So, because chemicals don't like to be cold, and to get it to the process area where it was more beneficial, more economical to bring it to close to the the, um, the treatment of the wastewater, saved a lot of adjustments and use less chemical. You know, um, it's, um, that's what was going on. The, oh yeah, the, we never had a bathroom, a shower unit at the, uh, never had men and women's. We, we did that all in house with, um, with the building materials and the staff, other than plumbing, and electrical, you know, just but you know everything that code or uh, we had to get a permit, you know, just uh, so now we have men and women bathrooms separated. So I couldn't believe I'm why we thought then in there that we didn't have one of one bathroom. <laughs> but they utilize a place for the chemicals and they they were very ingenious on doing that. So it's uh, it's, uh, it's really nice to see that, you know, those young know, staff can go to the public bathrooms and go up and have their own place, changing area and everything. So that was a good thing. Uh, let's see. Uh, Plants were uh, overall uh, both water and sewer budgets are at 72 percent spent. Uh, where is the fuel for a new new LP? You see, it's at 125. We're investigating that. That's the line on we're wondering. I think is it a typo or they forgot to give us our discount? Maybe a lot of price. Office supplies was basically uh, nailing um, oh that was a printer that we had applied for the wastewater plant to die. Anybody have specific questions on the sewer um, expenditures so far? I have a proposal. Um, we're meeting next week, and um, we are covering cemetery, um, the uh, library, and the rec, rec committee. And those are usually pretty quick presentations. And I'm wondering if we want to defer going to the town sort of quarterly to next week, just as it's 8:30. But I'm happy to keep going. But if Everybody's good to push it to next week because I think we'll have plenty of time. Um, um, sure, it, it might be um, because I, you know, honestly can't speak to every single line and what's going on in every single department because I'm not the town administrator. Uh, I was just handed this budget to work with and maintain. Um, so I would encourage everybody to kind of look through it and bring questions um, to the meeting, and I'll do the best I can um, to answer them. Um, uh, you know, there's a couple of things. Um, that we want to mention, um, but otherwise, I mean, the budget is kind of where it is, um, and it's, you know, we have the revenue, um, so we'll view the revenue and um, the current budget, and we'll do the best we can to answer the questions. Is that okay? I mean, I, I yeah, that's that's right. Right. are you looking for a motion for that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we need a, I think we need a motion. Well, first, uh, I'll ask if there's any other business that anybody wants to cover. Um, and now I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Um, I hope that we adjourn in light of your plan. <laughs> <laughs> Second from two. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? One more down.